want. In fact, uh, one of our uh, sometimes co-hosts on the program, one of our other lady co-hosts, Meg, has been apparently harassed big time at the airport. She went down south uh, this like about a week ago. She went down to Florida to meet up with the, the Liberty on Tour guys, Adam and Pete, uh, LibertyOnTour.com. Of course, we've had them on the show a number of times, and she was getting ready to come back here uh, tonight, come back to New Hampshire, when she posted a Facebook update saying she was escorted from the airport by about a dozen cops and seven TSA agents, and now she's on the phone. Uh, Meg, are you there? Yeah, hi. Hey, uh, what's what what happened tonight? Um, so I went to the uh, Fort Lauderdale airport to uh, fly out of Miami here, and uh, I was, you know, one of the random, actually the only random person chosen for the body scanner. And so instantly I was just like, no, I'm not comfortable with that at all. So the, um, you know, of course, they all start screaming at the top of their lungs, opt out, which instantly Wait. drew all the attention of the entire security area on mm-hmm. me. And I I'd like to point out there. real quick before anybody, this goes on, because this is kind of important. So you believe that you were the only one picked for this, uh, this, this scanner and you're like not an uh, unattractive female, right? Like, so if she's the, smoking hot, right. If there's, <laughs> if, if I was going to pick out of a plane full of people who to see naked, it might be you with, the, you know, you know, maybe you'd it's be the random, top Mark, five. What are you talking about? Right. It's, it's random. It's random, but they picked the hottest chick there. <laughs> yeah. So um, when I, you know, told them I didn't want that, they all screamed opt out. And um, some lady came over starting to put on gloves already. And she like grabbed my arm and started pulling me into this area. And I just kind of pulled away from her. And I was like, whoa, whoa, what's, you know, what's going on here? And she's like, well, if you opt out, you know, I have to give you a full pat down. And I've read about these new pat down procedures that they have, which, right. is, and I've gone through them as well. And it, it's like physical full palm on every area of your body, including like on your breast. They have to squeeze and like twist them. What? It, it, it hurts. Like it, it's getting to the point where I feel more physically molested than if some random guy actually came up and molested me. It's it's more intrusive than that. And They're so, twisting you know, on your breasts. I didn't even realize that was happening. I mean, it's horrifying. Yeah. And so they put me in this little area, which is directly after both the body scanner and the, um, like, regular magnetic detector. Mm-hmm. And so everybody who goes through that has to, you know, go around this area that I'm in. And I'm just standing there, and this lady's screaming at me about the procedures. And I was like, okay, well, can I talk to your boss? Because I obviously couldn't get anywhere with her. So, so you're basically front out. and center in front of everybody that's coming through. They're all oh, watching yeah. you. They have, to, they have to walk around me. In a little glass cell? To their ticket. Uh, no, it's just like a little roped-off area. Okay. It's directly after the metal detector. So anybody who walks out has to walk around that area to go get their stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I'm sitting there, and she brings out her manager, and the first thing she says to the manager is, this girl has all kinds of opinions on how we're doing our job wrong, and that's how she introduces the situation to this lady. So, of course, like, I try and ask her a question. I don't get 30 seconds into talking with this woman, and she runs away, and at that point, there's at least five or six TSA agents surrounding me. And she comes back with a dozen cops. Like, I sat there and counted them. There was 12 cops there. And I asked at one point if I could grab my camera. They wouldn't let me touch my stuff. They, like, at one point even took it back up to the gate of the airlines that I was flying with. So it was nowhere near me. And I'm just sitting there, like, I had taken off my jacket, my shoes, all my jewelry, everything. And I'm trying to talk to the one officer who I guess they put in charge of the situation. And any time I asked him a question that he didn't have an answer to, he would get really upset and just start yelling at me some more. Mm. And so finally they just cuffed me in the chair. And at this point, like, so many people are yelling at me. I don't know where my stuff is, and I'm just scared. And as soon as they go to do that, the original TSA lady who was going to give me the pat-down just kind of not really whispers, but quietly so nobody else can hear, says, well, I can tell you one thing, and then she rips my airline ticket in half. <gasps> wow. Oh. And oh that's aggressive. So, and what's the point in that? She she doesn't get to control whether or not um, you have a, a ticket to the airline. She controls whether or not you can get to the gate. But that's really, yeah. you know, like these people are overstepping their bounds. I, can they handcuff you without you being arrested? Apparently. I don't know, but they, yeah, they... Uh, 
every, at least four different people uh, were passing around my ID and like writing it down, doing yeah. background checks. While all the while, at least four, like two of the TSA agents, two of the cops, while I was sitting in that chair. At this point, I'm shaking, I'm sobbing, I can't like wipe my face, so I just look like a mess. And everybody. Mm who comes through security is staring at me while these people give me a good 30 minute lecture on terrorism. Yeah. Really? I just, I, I could not handle every moment. I was just like, I do not care if these people are doing those things because it has nothing to do. And with they me. did all of this to you because you asked some questions, right? Like you refused yeah. and then you took off your shoes. You took off your belt. You took off, you know, you took off your jewelry. So you were complying with the procedure. Yeah. They, they just, and it, and all the while, because I was sitting in this area that was like the designated, you know, secondary screening area, nobody else had to go through second screening because I was taking it up. So not one person the entire hour I was there had to deal with either the body scanner or the pat down. I was the only person. And because, like, I had some questions about it, finally they just escorted me out of the airport. No questions regarding our yeah. procedures. None. I didn't know they were doing random body scans. I thought they were starting to make it so everybody had to go through that. That hasn't been implemented at uh, at all airports, I guess, yet. Yeah, and it wasn't like the line was particularly long. There was maybe four or five people in front of me, three people behind me. That's it. And I was hmm. the only person out of that first group that was picked. And then, you know, as the hour drug on, more and more people started arriving. But I was the only one. Hmm. Wow. You know, I wonder what would happen if you just show up in a, in a Speedo. Um, yeah, I just I wonder what would happen because this is what they want to reduce you to. However, they'd likely take it as an affront. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah then you'd get a well, charge for you know being disorderly or something like that. <laughs> and how strange that they would happen to choose uh, Meg for this body scan. You chose to not be body scanned, and so then they all started shouting "opt out." Uh, all around the security area, pulled you yeah, in. Also in Spanish, since it's a very Spanish-speaking right. area. So, uh, so then they pulled you by your arm into a different, uh, to an, another area where they began doing the uh, the, the squeeze down, if you will, because apparently. Yeah, well, I I stopped them before they started that, just because I knew it was coming, and I, I you know was not comfortable with it, and so instantly I just said, "No, I'm not comfortable with that. I have." questions first you know oh i see and so that you never got to the point of them actually uh, doing the pat down no no okay. it was it, it wasn't that i was intending to like miss my flight if that happened i just you know i didn't want to blindly go okay you know feel me up well how so, did you know they they were going to you mentioned they were twisting uh your breasts or they were twist you knew that they were would twist twist breasts had you heard that had you seen it happen um, I, I had read a few articles since these new um, procedures went into effect, I think like a week or two ago, and also like I had seen videos and stuff like that, and like, before even this started, when, you know, before I was even into the ideas of liberty, after 9-11, I would get random screening, and they would do that, and so I just sort of knew it was coming, and I didn't want to do that again. I didn't want to, you know, allow them to touch me in ways that I'm not comfortable with. And they just, you know, they, they would rather prefer to think that I'm insane than I'm a person with a logical question. And so they just treated me like an insane person and wouldn't even listen to me. And then called in a dozen cops, seven TSA yep. agents, to escort you out of the airport after tearing up your ticket in front of you and doing all of this, um, you know, handcuffing you, putting you, uh, sit, sitting you down, handcuffing you. You're crying, making a mess of your uh, of yourself. People, you can't wipe your uh, your eyes, and uh, people are yeah. all around watching this as they're doing everything they can to bring attention to you, to make an example out of you, to show people in line, hey, you don't want to opt out, or else you'll have to go through this uh, as well. Yeah, and they wouldn't even let me touch my bags or put on my shoes or my jacket or anything until I was out because they had, like, all the 12 cops surrounding me with the seven TSA agents carrying my stuff around them, walking me out of the airport. Like, everybody was being very loud about it and on the radio saying what they were doing and stuff like that. So everybody in the airport was just watching me, like, just, you know, be toted out by this massive... I don't know. It was like an army of government agents taking and, and me out of the airport. And yeah, the same thing happened to me when I uh, you know, was just 
just a little cantankerous with the uh, the people for a secondary screening. They they circled me up with like twelve law enforcement officers of different level TSA local cops and a dog I mean this this is what they do it's mental conditioning and psychological torture and they can do they're just they're just trying to to hold you out and say look look other people look if you so much as look at us crossways we are going to make your life miserable well Meg you know you and I have a very different person you know we have different personalities and i'm such a loud mouth they must just not want to deal with me because i'm you know from the time that i step into the line i start saying don't you feel like this is germany (laughs) they're having us undress and they're having us put our things and i just go that route you know from the very beginning and they probably just want you haven't had more trouble they just want to get me (laughs) thrown out of there well, I was, and while we were sitting there for like the half hour when I was just on that chair crying, I kept trying to ask them questions that I thought, you know, might touch them in ways that just the normal, you know, this is Nazi Germany type statements will do. And <laughs> one of the questions I asked was, you know, how do you feel that sex crime victims feel about this procedure? Like, do you think this could have negative effects on them? And the cop, every answer he gave me was basically, you know, it's not about you, it's not about me, it's about the greater good. Mm, yeah. thing. And I don't <laughs> sure. see how any good is gained by throwing people off to the side like that. Well, it, know, it makes no sense. I don't see how there's any good uh, gained by an organization that misses 50, um, 50% or more of guns, knives, and bombs that it tests itself on. But this organization oh, yeah. has to appear relevant to itself at the very least. That way they can feel like they aren't useless cogs in a useless machine. To where, Meg, did they take you when you exited the airport? Did they just take you right out to the uh, the drop-off uh, zone? First, or? first, they took me to like the ticket counter for the airlines that I was going through because mm-hmm. at that point I had missed my flight, and so I had you know no way home. And the airline uh, manager was actually very, very kind, and he was just like, "We'll get you home. Don't worry," because you know I was a mess at that point, just shaking and upset. And, mm. He's like, we'll get you home. Uh, if you want to find a different airport nearby that doesn't have the body scanners, or if you want to come back tomorrow and try again and hope you don't get the special screening, you know, whatever <laughs> whatever you need, we'll, we'll take care of it. And so he was very kind and accommodating. And he was saying which, all of this with the with the police surrounding his, uh, his kiosk or his table? Um, that was – there was only uh, three or four TSA okay. and police at that point. I mean, some of them had left, and then – once that was to, like, he printed me out a new ticket since I'd need the ticket to call in and exchange. And mm-hmm. obviously I didn't have the original anymore. Wow. And so after that was all done and, you know, I kind of calmed down a little bit. Then the cops walked me out front to the departures, like, loading area and just told me to wait there and managed to get a hold of Pete. And he was kind enough to come and pick me back up. But, but, but that's really the reality, was, though. Um, you, this person who uh, at this point is the is huge person of interest, tomorrow you can get your ticket again, go back, and the likelihood is that you will not be special screened. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's just random. It's just this stupid system. But yeah. I don't understand, though, Meg, why didn't you have righteous indignation? You know, why, like obviously you were crying and you and you felt victimized a bit and everything. I would have just been pissed. Well, at first I was, but then once it got to the point where there was, you know, 12 big guys with guns surrounding me and I had nothing more, I couldn't even move and they wouldn't mm-hmm. let me touch my stuff. And, mm-hmm. you know, at one point I asked if I could get my camera and they just started screaming, don't touch your bag, <laughs> you know? And yeah. Like, what? Mm-hmm. what? And mm-hmm. As though you were some sort of, and, I mean, if you were a mad bomber, you could have just set off your 